just thought I'd do a quick unboxing here of uh, a uh, Clash of Arms game from uh, what year was this published? Sometime in the early aughts, maybe. Uh, this is 1777, uh, Year of the Hangman, 2002. Um, and this is an operational level game of the Philadelphia Campaign of 1777. Um, as you can see, right there. Um, and this, I think, was actually designed by um, Ed Wimble. And oh, interesting, it looks like it does have, oh, just a study of the Ten Crucial Days and the Battles of Trenton and Princeton. I don't think it actually includes the Battles of Trenton and Princeton. Um, but this is uh, one that I was interested in because I'm currently playing uh, Brandywine here from the Battles of the Age of Battles from the Age of Reason, uh, and so I, I didn't really know anything about the Pennsylvania Campaign at all before I started playing this. Um, so I thought trying out another Clash of Arms title uh, on the the whole the campaign as a whole from an operational level uh, might be kind of interesting. So um, sort of an interesting uh, cover on it. Um, usually Clash of Arms goes more with just straight up historical paintings of a battle. Uh, you know, you think of their um, uh, Battles from the Age of Reason titles, or there's Amateurs to Arms here too. Um, where I guess this isn't straight up historical paintings either. It's got paintings on it though, but like, you know, naval, land, and then a map, you know, but, but typical lush kind of... Uh, Clash of Arms production quality, but you know, Brandywine here, that's got a painting on it. Lewisitz painting. Monmouth painting. Fontenoy painting. Frog painting. Um, so, and then, you know, the, I, there's a couple more Clash of Arms games down there. Uh, these are the ones that are not in normal board game size boxes, or at least not all of them. Uh, but Legion of Honor, you know, you've got a big painting there. Uh, I guess Summer Storm and um, Triumph of Chaos are both in sort of normal size boxes, but they they both also have, um, you know, some sort of period artwork piece on it, as does uh, La Bataille de Moscow. Uh, so this was sort of a, a change from that, um, kind of a little busy cover, you know, little nooses hanging off of the sevens, uh, kind of cheesy. Um, but, you know, an assembled collection of images, this is very Roger McGowan in his clip art phase, uh, where you've just, you know, thrown together a bunch of related images on a particular subject. Um, so, not the greatest of Clash of Arms' cover, although, like most Clash of Arms games, the, the texture of the box has that kind of linen... Um, texture finish that, uh, you know, like the Fantasy Flight boxes and stuff typically have. Um, not all Clash of Arms games have this, but most of their, uh, uh, like Labatt titles, for instance, or uh, most of the the uh, Battles from the Age of Reason um, titles have that kind of same finish, except for Monmouth and uh, Brandywine, for some reason, have regular, just kind of glossy texture, I think. Yeah, Amateur's Arms does, too. Um, so, you know, it's got that going for it. And in the back, very wordy. Uh, Clash of Arms always has really good descriptions on the back of their boxes, um, you know, within pictures of the, of the counters. And the counters are very much that Clash of Arms style. This is exactly like the counters in Labatt and in the Battles from the Age of Reason. So, close the box. Go ahead and pop it open. I can do this one handed. I'm actually holding the camera and I have my tripod handy. Um, I saw this sticker on here. I bought this used from, my, uh, from Enterprise Games, uh, which is a local uh, guy who um, sells a lot of used games, uh, war games and stuff on the internet, and he's based in Noblesville. So I um, have bought a couple games from him where I can just swing by his place and pick up the games. Don't have to worry about shipping. Um, but I saw this on the inside here. Theater of the Mind Enterprise. Don't know what that is, but... There's a sticker on there. Anyway, 
Um, here is sort of like the supplementary material, I guess. So this is what it advertised on the front of the box. Being an examination of the Philadelphia campaign of that year, including a study of the ten crucial days of 1776 and the battles of Trenton and Princeton. Um, and this is actually... I thought this is the supplementary material. I think this is actually the rules. Yeah, that's the supplementary material. So this is the rule book, which is... These pages actually numbered 15. So it's 15 pages of rules. There's a chart on the back here, TEC. Um, so 15 pages of rules. Don't know how good they are. I've read kind of mixed things about the rules. Um, so, and I'm not sure if there's living rules that were ever created for this or not. Um, so it may just be, you know, have to have to work with what has been given um, but you know so for for a what I've read is fairly could be a fairly complex game that seems like a fairly short rule book so you know, that may be encouraging in that regard although it may be short because it doesn't have enough uh, information in it so then here's the historical commentary and scenarios that looks like um, what is it Cliveden there the house at uh, Germantown on the cover uh, that'll be the next battle that I do after Brandywine. Um, and this one, uh, Clash of Arms does this a lot. It's on this parchment style paper. Um, they do this, they use that for a lot of the charts and stuff in their Labatt games. Um, but it looks like a nice and dense collection of historical commentary. Uh, this might actually be longer than the rules. Um, of course, they got a chart on the back of this book, too. Yeah, 23 pages for this. Uh, so this is actually longer than the rules. <laughs> kind of nice. Oh, and there's my receipt Enterprise Games. Forgot he stuck an invoice in the box. Um, I think there's only one, yeah, one counter sheet. Which, as you can see, is all uh, classic Clash of Arms style. Um, and this counter sheet doesn't look as bad um, as some Clash of Arms counter sheets. Clash of Arms is notorious for having, uh, for their die cutting, of having like really thick connection bits here so that you have to kind of, you can't really break them apart uh, you know once you cut out the whole strips I usually use a rotary cutter and just um, you know, run it along the length wise sections and then along there and uh, just pull out the whole strips and then just pop them apart pop each counter apart um, from the strip by hand uh, the problem with um, Clash of Arms games is usually they're A, they use those brown core counters which are thicker and a little, a little stiffer than your average white core counters that you know GMT or MMP would use um, but then a lot of times the, the connection between each counter is much thicker or wider um, than it is on you know a GMT or MMP release, and that's just the nature of the die cutting. Um, even their their more current games are like that. And so I don't know if that's because they use a, a a printer in the the U.S. here, or if they die cut themselves, or what they do. Um, but a lot of times that makes their counters tougher. Uh, they're not as good um, for my two millimeter organ laminations corner rounder because when they have real wide um, connected corners on them, uh, when you use the 2mm clipper on them, you end up with little wing, wings kind of sticking out because it can't get the whole corner of the, the super wide die cut off the, the off the corner. So I actually use a 2.5mm counter clipper for most of my um, Clash of Arms games. So, But otherwise, this is a, a very, very typical Clash of Arms counters here. Gorgeous to look at. And they're all, you know, based on the historical uniforms. Um, so, you know, if you can't have minis, I guess this is about his next best thing. Uh, some people don't like them too much because they're hard to tell um, sometimes what what the uh, unit organizations are if you've got a bunch of different uniformed little counters in a, a particular unit. Um, so command can sometimes be difficult to tell. And also these end up usually having um, information on the back uh, that's not, you know, so you have to flip the counters over a lot um, to actually 
get relevant information out of these, because this is operational, maybe you won't have that problem. It looks like most of these I don't see a lot of numbers on the back. Um, it just has a description of whoops of what the what the particular unit is. So it may not be as bad um, in this as it is in some of their Labatt and uh, BAR titles. So um, take a look at the I guess before I unfold the map, um, I'll just pull out some of the, the card stock here. So you've got uh, off-board army displays. Um, this is for the Brits. And again, this is nice. Uh, Clash of Arms always has these great sort of antiqued and very thematic uh, and period-looking charts and stuff for their games. Uh, they take that little extra step to make things look, uh, give things that particular kind of period and historical look, which I really like. Um, so then here's your Rebel off-board army display. And got some charts and tables. This is just on sort of a manila card stack. There's a secret play. And uh, there must be a sequence of play counter or something that you'll place in those squares there as you go through the uh, sequence of play for the game. And then miniatures, rules. This Clash of Arms did some mini videos for that era. That's cool. And then this may be a Rata, yeah, addendum. So there's a Rata sheet here. Uh, maybe with some, yeah, Q&A. And then, let's balance the other map. Use my other hand here while I'm holding the camera to open it. And this is definitely one of the things that caught my eye when I was uh, looking to buy this. Was uh, it's a very gorgeous looking map up close. Uh, from a distance, it looks kind of dark and murky, um, sort of mottled. Um, it's got this interesting thing here: turn record spiral. Um, you know, some various tracks and things all kind of hidden in the woods up there. Um, but yeah, it has this very dark. I don't know if the, some of the glare off of it is making that not particularly discernible here, but it does have sort of a murky look to it. Uh, but when you get up close, and hopefully I can get up close enough without getting totally um, out of focus, you get up close and you get all these lovely little details. You get the little buildings there, um, and then you, of course you can see fields, all your plowed fields and stuff, and it just gives this wonderful texture of, you know, Pennsylvania countryside, which is um, where this whole campaign kind of took place. So, uh, just really cool stuff on Clash of Arms maps. And of course, it's in that um, typical Clash of Arms map style, which has that, that kind of really textured uh, parchment, heavy parchment map feel to it, um, which is always really nice. So, uh, I look forward to giving this one a try after I've taken a stab at the uh, um, tactical level of Brandywine here. Uh, we'll see how the operational level will play. Now, I'm not sure how well this will play solo. It's uh, um, kind of, I think, ill-suited for that because I believe there is a certain amount of hidden movement. Um, and it may be a game that you can actually play uh, um, blind. You know, you'd have your umpired uh, two sides playing playing blind. So, and that may be a possibility too. We'll have to see. So I might try this one opposed uh, at the club or something. But uh, there you have 1777, Year the Hangman from Clash of Arms.